Now, Keir Starmer told GB News yesterday that he cannot guarantee that veterans will be placed ahead of other groups in housing waiting lists, including even asylum seekers. Well, joining me now is Jamie Micklefield, a Royal Artillery veteran. Jamie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, now, Jamie, I understand that after your time of service, you found yourself getting into a bit of a pickle. Before we talk about um, Sir Keir Starmer's Homes for Heroes initiative, what you make of that, can you tell us, would you mind sharing your story with us? Well, yeah, I mean, I left the military and I had nowhere uh, to live, so um, I ended up in Mike Jackson House in Aldershot, um, which is uh, like supported housing until I, I found somewhere else to live. Um, they did have caseworkers and that there, uh, but for me, I needed to do it all myself, so... <clears throat> And, and, and how, how, difficult, how difficult did you find it, uh, making that transition, Jane? We hear so often you know, the camaraderie you have in, 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 the, in your regiment, you know, you're surrounded by support, you've got the banter, you've got the day-to-day -day engagement, and then you find yourself back out on Civvy Street being dumped out there. I mean, were you given any help? And how overwhelming did you find all of that? Um, it's very tough, really, because, um, you know, you've got, um, it, it's the big wide world, effectively. It's like um, what you just mentioned there is you're in the military. I'm ex Royal Dragoon Guards, uh, Royal Armour Corps, um, and I had a great lot of people around me. But when you leave, uh, you left to do all this yourself, um, you know, and um, housing is a big shock to some people because when you're used to getting fed, watered, yeah. you've got accommodation, etc you know you've got all these bills to pay when you come out into reality you've got council tax rent all these bills as we all know um which you know is not cheap these days as well mm. but um yeah it's very tough and, and you've really got to um clamp down on it really I, I found it very very difficult to to transition especially mm. when you're wondering what's next of course. And so could I ask you now, Jamie, for your reaction to Homes for Heroes, Sir Keir Stormer, when he announced that, we all thought, great, at last, this is precisely the kind of thing that veterans need, that the country needs, at last there's some sense of priority being given to veterans' needs. And yet, when we asked the Prime Minister, Jamie, face-to-face -face yesterday, it turns out it's not the case after all. Veterans won't be at the front of the queue. They could even be behind the queue, behind asylum seekers. Jamie, having served your country and been prepared to die for your country... How does that make you feel? Well, it's not nice. It's not nice to her. Um, <clears throat> you know, um, you know, we, 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 we do the job. We we'll go away. We we'll leave our families. Some of us don't come back. Some of us don't come back um, like, we, we, like we went. We, we're broken, some of us. So, um, yeah, it's not nice. What would you like to see done instead? I mean, what would you like to see offered to people like you? I mean, I found out from, from a former SAS veteran earlier, I couldn't believe my ears, um, that former veterans can't claim benefits if they're homeless. Now, I get it. You know, you don't have a fixed address, but surely there needs to be some kind of initiative specifically giving veterans who are homeless just an address they can apply to get benefits, to get help, to get on their feet, to get started again. It seems astonishing that that isn't in place, Jamie. Yeah, it's terrible, really. I mean, you know, the, these guys need to uh, eat effectively and live. I mean, if you're not getting any money, then that, that's really terrible. I mean, you know, it, it's... Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, without kind of swearing, it's 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 bad. We need, we need to look after our veterans, you know, um, a lot better. We need to be recognised. We, we need the support. We don't need it next year. We need it now. Jamie, uh, none of us want you to swear on TV, mostly my bosses, so let's not <laughs> do that. But, <laughs> but could I ask you just, just, just quickly, how are you doing, mate? How are you? Um, well... I'm all right. You know, I, I do suffer PTSD. Um, I feel a bit nervous now, to be honest, but Don't be I'm mate. going for You're a rocky friends. road, to be honest. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going for a bit of a rocky road at the minute. So um, I'm getting treatment, but we'll, we'll, we'll push on with that. But other than that, you know, I've got my mates, um, as you know, people. So I don't want to get emotional, sorry. 
No, you've got every right to feel emotional, especially under these circumstances. Look, Jamie, I know it's been difficult for you to come on TV and talk about this today. I can see you're emotional. Mate, I, I, I just wish you the very, very best of British. Thanks for your service. And Thank let's you. stay in touch. Jamie Mickerfield, top man, top lad. Thank you. Oh. oh, God. What can you say? Let's move on. Now, Skier Starmer, oh, sorry. Mm, these people deserve better. They really, really deserve better than this. They really, really do. And we've got well, there we go. And join me now to discuss this is Matthew Hellier, a former member of the Special Forces and the chief executive of the Pilgrim Bandits Charity, which supports wounded, injured and sick veterans. Welcome to the show. An absolute delight to have you on, Matthew. We were very, very excited. I'm sure you were too. Um, when the Homes for Heroes initiative was announced, at last we felt there'd be priority support for veterans, much much needed. People who went to war for their country, prepared to die, should be at the front of the queue. That, however, transpired isn't the case. The Prime Minister confessed to us yesterday on the show that even asylum seekers could be put ahead of veterans. How does that make you feel? Well, as soon as I heard, I thought it was either hot air or hot news. And uh, as it transpires, it's hot air. As we know, uh, veterans, you know, they struggle with their resettlement process coming out of the military. And um, and Sakir is just trying to appease another part of our community with false promises. Uh, they've not thought into it enough. There's no plans uh, and there's no policies to do this at all. It's just talk. And Matthew, what would you like to have seen done instead? I mean, you, you help former servicemen and women who are on their knees, who need help. You know their specific requirements. You've served in the forces at the very highest level. You command their respect. You're not on Civvy Street. What would you do? How would you have ran this Home for Heroes policy? Well, this comes down straight down to grassroots. We need to get the resettlement and the recruitment done correctly. We are not doing it correctly. Resettlement means health, uh, medical, dental, and then housing. And then when we get the housing correct, then we can launch uh, veterans into the workforce. But just by putting them into a house is not, to, or, or promising to put them in a house, does not, uh, it is not, it is not uh, providing a solution. There are over 500 veteran, uh, veteran families being evicted every three months in this country. Uh, Keir Starmer and his uh, Office for Veterans Affairs just have not got their statistics right. They don't know their job uh, and they need to knuckle down and find out what is actually needed. And in terms of the emotional impacts, I mean, we, we had a former serviceman on the show yesterday. We're having another couple later in the show. And I've been contacted by veteran friends of mine who just feel like they've been used almost as like a political pawn. Homes for Heroes, of course, is a phrase that Lloyd George um, commanded in the 19, 1918, directly after World War I. It was specifically and deliberately meant to house and help people who'd been to war, uh, many of whom were were, were very, very badly injured, just to adopt that phrase in itself, but to apply to care workers, to domestic abuse survivors, as important as they are. Do you feel, Matthew, there's a sense that veterans here have just been used as a pawn in the policy? 100%. He's just trying to appease the population. He's trying to win votes over the veteran community, and it just isn't there. You know, there are, there are more uh, pressing, pressing um, problems that we need to address we need to address, uh, address the, the resettlement, really. We need to look at the medical stuff. We need to look at the dental stuff. And then we look at the housing. And, uh, you know, they're just, there is just too many veterans that are, that are sofa surfing, that are sleeping on families, you know, family sofas. They're looking after, they're getting looked after by, um, you know, friends and family. They just, we really need to grab this. And Matthew, um, we know that, Number 10, watch this show. Um, they don't always enjoy it because we give them, you know, unfettered messaging. If you would say a message to Sir Keir Stone, if you wanted to pass a message on to the Prime Minister, what would you say to him? Uh, we have a lot of empty buildings in the big cities. Let's start looking at putting these uh, veterans into the empty buildings. Veterans can't, homeless veterans can't claim benefits. Okay, and I think Sir Keir is a little oh. bit worried about that. If we give people a door number, 
give them a unit that they can live from, then they can start claiming benefits, they can start contributing to part of this community, uh, and then we can start having a concerted effort from all of the charities. We know where they are. We can then help homeless veterans. We can push them up the ladder and give them the, uh, the respect they all deserve. Matthew, I'm absolutely speechless that, that homeless veterans can't claim benefits or fund. Is that true? It's true. Without, without an address, you can't claim any benefits, can you? So our well, homeless veterans are being, like I said, 500 veterans being pushed out of the houses every three months. It's an absolute tragedy in this country. OK, it needs to be addressed. But as I said, there are programs out there. We need to look at the empty buildings. We need to come to some sort of solution. We need to give people a door number, an address, and then they can claim benefits. The charities can then use the concerted effort, get around these people, give them the needs that they want, and we can just push them up the ladder. They will become uh, good members of the community contributing to this country at the moment they're not getting the choice they're not getting it they're injured they're mentally their mental health are suffering you know everything like that is just compounded against them matthew had a, you know, you're an inspiring man I'd, I'd vote for you we've got to get together and try and do something about this mate why, why don't we exchange details after this and try and get something going because we're you know we're, i'm connected politically you know your stuff why don't we try and get something going mate would you be up for that 100 percent. let's do it Let's do it, man. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Amazing stuff. Matthew Hellier, absolute delight to talk to you. I'm just absolutely gobsmacked about that. But there we go. That's the country we live in.